So what does shared autonomy actually look like? Well, robots perform difficult tasks, like seeing two bridges, metro systems, wheeling gas platforms and smart factories, and even space to perform dangerous tasks. Because of the scale of these assets, it's impossible for humans to do that effectively and efficiently. This is where robots come in. Now, in classical robotics, we had a very clear separation between the workspace of robots and where humans would operate. Now, that workspace is becoming blended and that brings new challenges. One of the exciting things about robotics from a business perspective is that they don't tire, they don't go on holiday, they don't call in sick, so you're actually saving a lot of money. But the same story also has to be seen from the employee's perspective, because if you all of a sudden have somebody that does your job twice as good in half the time, you might actually have a problem. In the next 10 years, University of Oxford estimates that 80% of jobs in America are going to be partly or fully automated. And we're not just talking about blue collar, but also white collar jobs. What are we gonna do with those people who no longer can do the job that they're used to do? The ideal outcome would actually be to have robotics and humans work in tandem in the sense of shared autonomy. This new paradigm is about equipping people with new tools. Humans are very good at cognitive decision making. We are very good at contextualizing. Robots are very good at repeated powerful actions. So marry the best of both worlds, human decision making and the position, power, and accuracy of robotics. Even there, we can see a risk that has to do with de-skilling. Yes, it is fantastic that you have self-driving car taking over decision-making, but at the same time, you might de-learn how to drive properly. The issue of de-skilling always emerges whenever you use any type of technology. How many cell phone numbers do you know by heart? How much do you rely on spell correction? How do you navigate through the streets? Of course, you're relying on a technology, and every time you do that, you're less likely to be independent from it. Are robots good? Do we need to be scared of them? It's an interesting question to ask. Are robots good or bad? If you think about what a robot actually is, it is a tool, a technology. Why not let Robert the Robo walk over your threshold? Is, is a knife good or bad? It depends who is handling that knife. You can use a knife to cut bread and feed somebody. You can use a knife to hurt somebody. Technology is neutral in itself. It really depends what the person has in mind when they're using it. People are worried about robots acquiring new behaviors and going rogue. But robotics will perform based on the value functions that a programmer gives it to do. Robots are at their very best when they discover shortcuts using AI. But it's still us who are responsible for anything that does go wrong. In other words, it's not the robots who are good or bad. You're the biggest toy I've ever seen. And very well made too.